Hello friends, welcome back to All in Law. And today's topic of discussion is Clostridium tetani, microbiology. Clostridium tetani. Guys, this is really very important for USMLE step one examination. So before starting a discussion on this, I would request you to subscribe to our channel. Please subscribe and please share our videos with your friends. So guys, let me quickly start this. So Clostridium tetani, I'm going to discuss the important points related to USMLE step 1. Guys, this video does not only helps USMLE appearing students, but also it will help for the students, those who are appearing for Canadian examination, Australian, UK, okay, other different, uh, what do you call, country medical board examination. So let's talk about this. The important point is whether it's a gram positive or a gram negative. Tell me, guys, it's a gram positive. Rod or a bacilli? It's a rod. Okay. Whether it's spores or not, yes, it's a spore forming bacteria, it forms a spores, right? Whether it's an anaerobe or aerobe, it's an anaerobe, that's really important. So why, look at these three features, these three, three features you see in the bacillus series, okay, or bacillus bacteria. So this, but they are aerobes, okay, they are aerobes, but Tetany is anaerobe, okay? So got it? And they produce an important toxin that is a tetanus toxin. Right? These are the important. They are gram positive rods, spore forming, anaerobes, and produce a toxin known as a tetanus toxin. And how does it act? I'm going to tell you shortly. Okay, now what's a reservoir? It's nothing but soil okay and how it is transmitted through the punctured wound right if it's contaminated with the metal or a human bite you can say also okay right mm -hmm. and it also requires low tissue oxygenation e h low tissue oxygenation that's really very important for you smle step one examination Okay, now how pathogenesis? Pathogenesis. Okay, now important thing. What's the important? That's a toxin that's known as a tetanus TT, tetanus toxin, not tetanus toxide, tetanus toxin. Let me show it. Okay, tetanus toxin. How does it act? It blocks the release of inhibitory mediator that's a glycine and GABA. What are these? These are the inhibitory neurotransmitter and these inhibitory neurotransmitters are inhibited at syn spinal synapses. The excitatory takes a leading role. Right? And that's results in extreme muscle spasm. Got it? When inhibitors are inhibited, then excitatory will take a leading role and that leads in extreme muscle spasm. Got it? And it binds a receptor known as a gangliocyte. Gangliocyte receptors. Okay? And carried, important point is intraaxonally. Intra axonally to CNS okay guys got it right and what are the diseases that it can cause the diseases you know and this tetanus is also called as the what called tetanospasmin right yes opistotonus Okay, 
then it can cause extreme muscle spasm and it can cause rhesus sardonicus rhesus sardonicus okay so regarding the treatment of this i have made a beautiful table and that's really very important for usml step one and for a step two ck examination you can um, type in the search box of the youtube that tetanus taxin by all in law you will get the video try to watch that video that's really very important for usml step to ck okay guys i'm sure this video was really very helpful for your usml examination okay and thank you so much for watching this video okay uh, thank you so much take care